mine. What in the world? The Mommy kiss. We love it. We love it. Greenly say hey. You want to go see Glee today? So what you doing? What you doing? Say hey queens. Hey. You look like a pretty princess? Yeah. Say pretty princess. Princesses. <laughs> How old are you? Um, two years old. Two years old. And what's your name? Green. Greenly, that's right. Good job. Good job. What's baby brother's name? Kristen. Good job. Okay, ready? Yeah. Put your bows in. Oh, so sweet. So sweet, Greenlee, you look so pretty. We got out of the house. Huh? Yay! I know, right? Okay, so we're going to get Christmas pictures done, even though they're just family pictures. They're really just family pictures during yeah, Christmas time. Because we did it way too late. We were gonna send them out on a Christmas card, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Nope. And then we're dropping the kids off at my mom's. Guess what today is? What? Date day. Where are we at, babe? I'm sorry, I can't talk right now. How come? I'm, I'm too tired. Oh. So in three minutes, once we hit this draft, you'll be good? Yeah. Oh, okay. Don't talk to me until then. Whoa, Greenly. <laughs> What's going on? I'm tired. And we're back. And we're kid free, yay! Holy smokes, what are we going to do with ourselves? We're so excited. We're going to finish up that conversation about. I don't really know exactly where we're at. Yeah, so we were... Head, head to the questions. Okay, so we were talking, we we're on the topic of um, how we did a post last night on Instagram, how we okay. overcame our addiction. So we're going to finish up a few questions and then... Okay. Let's see, I don't have service right here. But I can see these few ones at the top. Um, the effect, this is a good one. The effects it has on you mentally and how that relates to you physically. So I'm, I'm assuming that that means like how it affected us mentally and then how it affected us physically. So for me, when I was using, um, it never made me feel better, which is so crazy because why did I keep using it? It's like, it, it's literally insanity is what it's called. But, yeah. um, and so mentally, if I'm not doing okay, it physically affects me with weight. Um, you know, I think that there was a point where like, I was bruising really bad because I wasn't eating properly. Um, so I guess that's how it would affect me physically. And then what else? I can't think of it right now. Like, uh, well, I can just speak on it real quick. Okay. And then you can come off me if you want. But uh, it, it affected me. The reason why I kept using is once I finally did, I everything felt like it disappeared. I had a God complex. Uh, felt like I'd get away with anything. Uh, felt like nothing else mattered. And it didn't at the end. But the bad thing is, is the emotions that I tried covering up with the drugs and alcohol, when the come down happened, or if I got too drunk or too high, it just increased the volume of emotions I had. And they were just all over the place. And then I would lash out with anger because I didn't want to feel the other ones. So initially I'd use because I thought it was covering up my problems. In the end, it sucked because it just multiplied them and um, made, them, you know, made the problems bigger. And of course, you create problems when you're doing that as well so yeah. but physically I was skinny you lose self-confidence um, definitely me being as skinny as I am if I get any skinnier I look like a bag of bones and it's just so embarrassing you know um, and I think we can both relate to that because we're tall too so like if we get too skinny it just doesn't yeah look and good. I, um, you know I, I didn't really have any uh, damage to my body done so that parts hardest parts and the best parts about being sober now I don't really think I have any scary parts um, the scary part the hardest part was when I was using because I'm always living in fear because obviously when you're living like that it's gonna catch up to you eventually you can't keep living like that and expect good things that happen to you um, and the best part about being sober is that I'm I show up um, we have a close relationship with our families on both sides and we're good parents we're good to each other and our life is just good 100 percent. you know what i'm saying yeah. like we work really hard to get to where we're at and so i'm very grateful for that and um like look
looking back and looking to where I'm at now, like I've never been this at peace, you know? Yeah, yeah. What was the question again? The scariest parts, hardest parts, and the best part about being sober now. I'm just gonna hit the best parts. The scariest parts and all that stuff is you know, pretty much over with. It was, and you know, I can just re-say whatever you said, but <clears throat> the best part is just, if you finally commit to being honest with yourself and honest to others, the possibilities of a good life are endless. We're living that right now. And um, most husbands don't have a good relationship with their in-laws, and I do. That's a blessing. Yeah. Um, it's just... Yeah, I think my family loves Gavin more than they love me. No, seriously. I don't know about all that. No, they do. Your mom loves you. <laughs> um, how much support did you have from family through that time? I mean, I had support from my family. They never, like, did away with me, but... I can see a huge difference from the support back then and now. Like, when I look back, I'm like, yeah, they supported me, but they didn't support me like they do now because they can trust me. Um, and there's a lot of things that I can see that they trust me with now that they didn't back then. Yeah. But my family finally, they didn't just lose all hope or stop the support or anything like that, but when they finally were just fed up, they still answered my calls, that kind of thing, but when they were finally, you could just tell they were finally fed up. That's what that's what pushed me into gear because before that it was a bunch of enabling and in the parents' eyes or whoever's helping in their eyes at the time, they just want to be there for me or be there for us and help us and do whatever they can, send us money, do that and do this, but in, in the end, they're just enabling and so we never have the ability to stop until all chains of command and everything are just done and we're just like okay we're fed up you know you have to figure this out on your own when you make somebody figure something out on their own they have no choice but to figure it out and when i was dealt with that choice or it was i finally learned my lesson but the support now is of course out of this world yeah and i get the question a lot like you know how do we overcome it and like advice for me it's hard to give advice because I remember like advice never did anything for me. I just had to be over it. I had to be completely done or I had to be shown like if you don't stop doing this, this is going to happen. That has always been in the back of my mind. Like I have to keep doing good. Um, and I feel like you have to just be at your breaking point to be done. Yeah. You know? For most addicts, I would say 99% of them were super stubborn. I can listen to anybody. Once you finally realize that you cannot be in control and you've got to let someone else be in control and that's not another human, you know, you got to figure out some belief or some higher power or realize that something is in control of our lives and you just let loose a little bit and relax and let life take its roles and let God into your life if that's your choice and really let him into your life. You, you're no longer in control and you'll see your life get better. And I mean, in a week. Yeah, because, I mean, I was forced into rehab at 18, and I, you know, graduated after being there 14 months and did so good, and there was so much more positive than negative, and then I got out, and I still did bad, but that was because I wasn't ready, and did I know that at the time? No. I didn't know that I wasn't ready to get sober until it happened, and I realized, or when I relapsed, and I realized that I guess I wasn't done, yeah. and it took me a few more years to get it, so. I got this friend of mine. To help me get into the program told me I had to get into the program there's no other choice nothing else was gonna help and I ended up getting in it but always told me even when things were rough or I didn't have any money or couldn't get a car couldn't get a job hardly and the job I had wasn't paying very well he just kept on telling me trust the process and you got to learn don't ask for patience but learn patience through that trust in the process you know when you're in a bad spot be in that bad spot live in that bad spot and remember you don't want to be back there because it's gonna happen you're gonna be in a tight spot you're gonna be broke you're not going to die. So be broke in that moment and just relax and take it in and trust the process because I promise you in a week, it's gone. Whatever that thought was that's in your head is gone and you slowly live that way and live in the bad moments. Don't sulk in them, but live in them. Remember them so that you don't do it again. Yeah. And I did that and boy, was he right. You're so sweet, babe. Yeah, you love it. I love you. So I think that wraps up today's video and... We love you guys. We thank you for tuning in. Let us know in the comments what you want our, I guess, next week's video to be. Right? Yeah, next week. Next week. And thanks for tuning in. We love you.